Here in Lowell, this former textile mill is home to dozens of artist studios. It's where John Welch works alone in an airy workshop. John Francis Designs is his creation and his passion. There's something very peaceful, very meditative about just taking a piece of wood and especially I really enjoy texturing. I just sit there and I just kind of listen to the chisel carving away and everything else melts away. I just disappear. By trade, Welch is a machinist and CAD or computer-aided designer. His second career as a woodworker and artist evolved naturally over time. My dad was always working on the house. My mom always had me into arts and crafts and things like that. So I was craving that hands-on interaction, that uh, kind of zen that comes from, from carving and working with your hands. In 2013, Welch began carving spoons. He branched out to serving and cutting boards, stools and mirrors. I was uh, very focused on making goods that had a purpose. There's no reason why things that you use every single day couldn't be beautiful pieces. I use the machines to break down the rough material and from there it's almost all hand carving and, and hand tools. I've worked a little bit with some exotic woods, but for the most part I stick to the domestics. My favorite to work with is walnut. I think that you have, it's just a very beautiful wood to carve. You have a very wide uh, variety of grain and texture in the wood itself. Welch's style is distinctive, catching the eye of food stylists, cookbook authors, and fans on social media. I've, I've always been a bit of a perfectionist and hand carving and working with my hands, and especially woodworking, has really helped me learn the beauty of imperfection. I think that hand carving things, it gives the piece a soul. There's some quality that maybe you can't put your finger on that you can't get from a machine made piece. You'll never get there with a machine made piece. Just across a busy Route 302, an old spirit leads you down a winding road to a workshop where we find William Janelle. Every day I wake up, I, I know I'm lucky. He arrived in Bridgeton by quite literally following the light. We were just hiking up through here looking at the property markers and we get up to the hill and my wife turned around and she looks up in the mountain and they just turned on the lights. It was just an incredible sight. A moment that seemed carved in stone, or in this case, wood. When I'm starting a carving, um, I'm scared. Every stroke of the mallet, it's like I'm a total failure. And then all of a sudden, there's this moment where you see what it is you want to carve. In my head, it's like, all right, I, I see it. It's there. And that is like a, a high. That high has led to decades of carvings, galleries, and a career inspired by the nature that surrounds his art. I've had a black bear right out the window, right in front of the shop. Janelle says it is impossible to calculate how many hours he spends in the shop, meticulously hammering, carving, as nature takes new form. I've often told my wife that if I had a cot and a hot plate, I would never leave. <laughs> The last vestige of a once thriving mill town, the still thriving Monadnock Paper Mill, the oldest continuously operating paper mill in the country, celebrating 200 years in 2019. We make a lot of wallpaper. We do a lot of very specialized packaging for the medical industry. We make the base for, for sandpapers. The scent strips that you get at the fragrance counter, which is highly engineered to make sure it mimics the human skin, the pH, so that you're not changing the scent. So it's, it's a pretty interesting science uh, creating all these different papers. They also generate 50% of their power needs from the river, which drives giant turbines that help run the machinery. Wood pulp is sourced from elsewhere, so there are not the smells or environmental concerns of some paper mills. In fact, their environmental stewardship has been praised. It's important to the Verney family, which bought the mill in the 40s and who live on the property. They wanted a healthy place to live for themselves and their, in the community. They're sportsmen, they fish, they hunt, they appreciate the environment and felt that they needed to be stewards of the property that they had acquired. So we'd like to share the joy and the accomplishment with as many people as we can. Uh, I think it's quite a feat to manufacture in New Hampshire for 200 years.
And Manadoc Paper Mill, the largest employer within a 12 mile radius of Bennington, New Hampshire. They employ about 170 people. Wow, and back to John Francis designs. Those wooden spoons are really popular with chefs and foodies. And he says that during the pandemic, it gave him an opportunity to slow down a bit mm. and experiment with his designs. I think that's something we all were able to do <laughs> during that time, maybe too slow. We have plenty of time. <laughs> Still to come, churning out pottery in Vermont.